Hello, I'm Vic Jacobson. I'm the founder of Hope Now and currently the international director of Our Father's Arms. Much of our work being here in Ukraine, though of course in other parts of the world as well. This is my story. Vic Jacobson was born in England on the 20th of July, 1941. When I was just a year old, my father died of tuberculosis. Because of his father's death and his mother's desertion in 1942, Vic grew up in an orphanage. Life in the orphanage was uh, not great. Uh, I don't have many happy memories of that childhood. When I was just eight years old, I discovered that I had a mother. Up until that point, I had no idea. But on my eighth birthday, I had a card just signed, Love Mum. At first, I thought that was somebody's cruel joke, but uh, sadly, then I found out that she was alive, but she really didn't want anything to do with me. Not long after that, that I got into my first bout of trouble. I broke into somebody's house and stole some rings. And that particular night I was caught because at the end of the day, we had a procedure whereby we would uh, be in our pajamas with our beds newly made for evening inspection. On this particular night, I'd not folded my trousers properly. And so the house mistress uh, picked up my trousers and shook them in front of my nose. And as she did so, out of the pockets fell these rings. It was like an eternity waiting for those rings to stop rolling on this wooden floor. I was grabbed by the ear and thrown downstairs uh, where I was uh, punished. The fact is that uh, by the time I was 15, uh, I'd already appeared before the juvenile court many times. He left school at the age of 15 and served for nine months as a boy soldier with the army. At first I joined the army. Uh, I thought at least I'm going to be fed. But after nine months in the army, uh, I was thrown out. I was caught by the police again for housebreaking. I was going to have a birthday party as it happened. My mates thought it would be great for us to go and have a, a good old booze up. I broke into 22 houses that day to get enough money to have a really good party. But on my last house, I stole a camera. It was in trying to fence that camera uh, that the police caught up with me. So the very first day it was possible for me to be in prison uh, because you couldn't go before 18. Here I was at 18, sitting in a prison cell, thinking, well, okay, this is where I'll spend the rest of my life because all the teachers I ever had told me that you'll spend your life in and out of jail. And uh, I was where they expected me to be, where I expected to be. But what was not expected was that while I was there, I would pick up a book that was left in my cell. It turned out to be a Bible. While in prison, Vic read a Gideon Bible and became a Christian. I wasn't a reader, uh, but there was nothing else to do. So I picked up this Bible and started to read it. I was fascinated by Jesus. I thought, what a great guy. He was a bit like me in a sense because uh, he was homeless. The Bible said that foxes have holes in the ground and the birds have their nests in the trees, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. And I thought, wow, that's great. He's just like me, he's a street kid. And he had a gang, he called his disciples and uh, I had a gang too. And he loved to take on authority as did I. So. I'm really taken with this man, Jesus. But eventually they put him on a cross and I said, well, there you go, that's what you get when you take on authority, they're gonna win in the end. 
and uh, he died. And then amazing thing, he's alive again. And I felt, what's, what's this? This happens only in like Walt Disney. You know, Donald Duck goes over the cliff and splot. Uh, and then in the next frame he's up and you know that that's fantasy. But this was about a man who actually died and then three days later rose from the dead. I don't know what it was that caused me to get down on my knees, but I prayed, God, you got 10 days to change my life. And if you ain't done it by then, you've copped it. And when I finished praying, I thought, Jacobson, you've gone mad. What's happening in your life? You're in prison and you're praying to God. And so I rang the bell inside the cell and this warden came up and I said, uh, I'd like to see a chaplain. So he said, what on earth do you want to see a chaplain for? I said, no, no, I think I've just become a Christian. So the chaplain came up and uh, he didn't know what to do. Uh, I told him what had happened and he just said, well, this has never happened to me before. So I said, well, it hasn't happened to you, it's happened to me. So I got back to reading the Bible and I was fascinated by this amazing reality that you could start your life all over again. Jesus called it being born again. Paul says, the things that are past, they belong in the past. You've got a brand new life. So I started to live this. And when I left the prison, uh, the very first thing I did was to find a church and I joined the church. And at first I thought, well, it's sort of, bit stuffy, uh, suited people, and uh, I was just a street kid. So at first I thought they were looking down their nose at me, thinking, well, you know, look what came in off the streets. But I needed somewhere to live. And the minister actually announced from the pulpit, you know, as anybody here would like to give a home to an ex-convict. We can imagine they all came running forward, but not quite. There was an elderly gentleman and his wife and they'd never had kids of their own, but they took me on. And that was probably the most important thing that happened to me because they took very seriously the importance of teaching me and uh, taught me all sorts of things. I spent two years with them. They were probably the most important two years of my life. In 1964, he became a student at Spurgeon's College. In 1985, Vic founded Hope Now, with registered offices in the UK, USA and Ukraine. For the first seven years, and Hope Now focused its attention on humanitarian work in post-apartheid South Africa, where it built several churches, engaged in prison ministry in Polsmore Prison, did significant work in various townships, and opened a home for ten homeless children from war-torn Angola and Rwanda. So I first came to Ukraine in 1992, uh, originally just to write a report for the Baptist World Alliance. And I came down to Tricassi and uh, met with some people here at uh, one of the Baptist churches. They asked me to share my life story with them and uh, I did that. And when I told them I'd been in prison, a guy sitting opposite me, a guy called Anatoly, uh, got very excited and he said, you know, we've just started working in Prison 62 in Hootery. And we've been told that if we uh, carry on the way we are, that we can even uh, turn one of the rooms into a chapel. And I said, well, are you going to do that? And he said, yeah, as soon as we have the money. But how much do you need? He said, $500. 
and I'd got exactly $500 in my back pocket. So I said, well, here you are. You go ahead and get your chapel. About three months later, I got a letter saying, could I come and open the chapel? Which I did, I flew out. And uh, when the guys met me, they said, well, if you've been in prison, uh, why don't you come here and teach us? So I used to come every month and uh, go and do some teaching. And so many people coming that uh, we outgrew the first chapel. So they gave us a bigger space and we built a second chapel and we outgrew that. And so then we asked if we could build a church, an absolutely purpose-built church in the prison. And the governor said, yes, do it. Uh, so we did. And we have seen so many lives change, not just in that prison, but in all of the prisons in the Chikasi Oblast. here in this cemetery uh, some uh, years ago that I met uh, a young lad he was then nine years of age and uh, he lived here uh, went to go beg at the funerals each day to get enough money to buy his mother her vodka uh, she would be in a drunken stupor and uh, he'd look after himself it was at this point that his uh, mother was taken into prison and he told me about his life and put his hand in mine and looked at me as much as to say well what are you going to do about this and I realized I had to do something at first I thought we would adopt him and take him over to England but I was considered to be too old for that uh, so we decided to open up uh, the first of our homes for homeless children was many years ago now. Uh, Alex is today uh, 26. He uh, went to school. Uh, he'd never ever been to school. In fact, he'd never even slept in a bed up until this point. And uh, of course, school was a struggle. Uh, I had to get a tutor to tutor him. He went on to university and uh, uh, studied at university business. And today, uh, he holds down a very responsible position with uh, Chukasi Milk Company and is married, has built his own house. Like so many of our youngsters that have come into our care, has done exceptionally well. It seems to me ironic that uh, it was here in a cemetery, a place of death, that so much life could come. And uh, I look at the lives of so many of our children today uh, vibrant and alive and I guess that's true of all the different areas of the work that we've done here in Ukraine whether it's with the prisoners uh, with the addicts uh, with those that are sick uh, the orphans in institutions uh, it's about bringing life into their lives the office of hope now in Ukraine is in one of the foster homes in Chikasi On the 1st of January 2010, Vic was named in the New Year's Honours List to become a member of the Order of the British Empire for services to the orphans and children of Ukraine. For 26 years, Vic changed thousands of lives and in his whole life, he's given away so much money that he can't even remember. Well, it's a long road from Winchester Prison in England to the prison out here in Tricassi, Ukraine. But this is symbolic of uh, the many different prisons that I've been to around the world and seen lives just like mine that have been changed very deeply in a very significant way because God has had an influence. And uh, I could introduce you to life after life after life 
where that is true. God changed his life and a lot more lives through him.